UFC 280, without a doubt, one of the most stacked cards of the year, if not the most stacked card of the year, centered around the top three fights. We are all just dying to see how the matchup of Islam Makashev versus Charles Oliveira plays out. Uh, of course, the other two fights leading up to the main event are a real treat. Piotr Jan taking on Sean O'Malley. That fight, uh, whether the line is, is steep right now, Piotr Jan or not, that fight is going to be a fun matchup. Uh, some people are expecting dominance from Jan. We'll see about that. We know Sean O'Malley is a, a tricky uh, a tricky problem to solve. And then, of course, we have the bantamweight championship of the world on the line between Aljamain Sterling and the snake TJ Dillashaw. That's a good fight as well. And, and then besides those three fights, it's a stacked card top to bottom. So uh, th this episode is going to be awesome. As you guys know, we'll have the timestamp so you could jump to any specific fight that you want to listen to. Uh, we're going to be breaking down each fight uh, amongst the card. We're going to be talking about uh, the betting lines in, in regards to these matchups. You guys know what time it is over here. And at the end of the day, we're going to make money betting on UFC 280. So uh, with no further ado, let's jump into today's episode. The MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? UFC 280. We are back on the mic. Now, just to keep you guys in the loop of what's been going on over here as of recently, in case you forgot. Uh, so I'm filming this uh, Friday, October the 14th. Of course, we have some UFC action taking place uh, tomorrow to attend to. We'll have some official plays rocking and whatnot. We'll have that recap video coming up to you guys after the fight card. Uh, but I'm recording this UFC 280 uh, prediction video a little bit earlier. Uh, I want to get this out to you. This is the card everyone's looking forward to. You guys know what time it is. And uh, I just wanted to get this out. So um, now again, we had a break in action even leading up to the, the Vivian Araujo versus Alexa Grasso card. Uh, so, you know, the most recent action we had, we had that hot week. Uh, dating back to the last episode of Dana White's Contender Series up until that UFC event where we went five of six during that week. And uh, now we had the break in time, but things are picking back up. Uh, all right. So I'm excited uh, to, to talk about this card, of course. Um, as we mentioned, it's extremely stacked, taking place in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I do expect, um, actually, I shouldn't say that. Um, skip that but uh again we have charles Oliveira taking on islam you guys know the deal with the top three fights we already talked enough about them uh the dariush versus mateus gamrod fight that's a, a very uh a very pleasing matchup stylistically in my opinion two very solid grapplers i'm very interested to see how that fight plays out uh manin farot uh one of the hidden gems right now of women's mixed martial arts and she's getting a true test finally in Caitlin Chikogian. I like that matchup. Sean Brady, the undefeated prospect, taking on uh, the, the most hated man in the game. And Bilal Muhammad will be getting to uh, Bully B here when we break down that fight. You guys know, not a fan of Bully B. He already has, has me blocked on Instagram. Um, you know, Other than that, though, just a lot of heavy talent throughout the card. Mahmoud Mur Mur Muradov taking on Kyle Bahayo. Uh, Mahmoud, excuse me, Muhammad Makayev taking on Malcolm Gordon. Poor old Malcolm Gordon there. Um, I mean, listen, uh, we can talk about all these fights. I like all these fights. Uh, even I'm excited to even talk about the first fight here. The Japanese uh, prospect, if you want to call him that. He has a good amount of experience. He's a talented fighter. Taking on uh, Magomed Mustafayev. Finally making his return to the cage. I mean, all these fights are awesome. Jelton Almeida, a true talent. Um, 
So you guys know the deal here. Uh, let me not talk too much before we jump into that first fight. I just want to say, of course, the timestamps are, are here. You guys can jump to any specific fight. And please do hit the like button on this video if you guys don't mind. And catch me on all my social media, especially my IG, uh, where we're now over 8,000 followers. We're trying to work our way to that 10K. Please go give me a follow over there. I'm killing it with the reels and whatnot. All types of posts coming at you. And uh, it's one of the best ways to keep up with me as far as live videos, uh, up-to-date stories, posts of me on, in the story and whatnot so please go follow me over there and also catch me on twitter where i'm constantly throwing out tweets these days as well at the mma teller all right and now if you guys want to work with me for my official plays of course those services are always available to you shoot me a message i can give you my pricing uh we've been killing it and you guys know we're gonna continue to kill it uh, up until the end of this year and realistically, uh move, moving forward past that just we're gonna be killing it non-stop all right so shoot me a message if you're interested Kicking the card off, we have Yamato Nishikawa taking on Magomed Mustafayev. Uh, if you didn't realize, this is a, a very fun fight right here. We have the 19-year-old Japanese prospect who's put together a nice resume over in Japan. Now, he's been fighting some lower-level competition over there. Um, but understand that Magomed Mustafayev, although he's kind of a respected fighter, he hasn't fought... And over two and a half years, we're talking about two years and seven months since his last fight where he lost that split decision to Brad Riddell, of course, a, a high level opponent there. Before that, he had the stunning knockout victory over Rafael Fazeev, which we know that's very impressive. Rafael Fazeev, uh, one of the most uh, deadly strikers in the game. Um, that, that really showed you the potential that a guy like Mustafayev has. He has that knockout power. He, he really puts a lot of intent into his shots. Now, that, that's good in the sense uh, if he's going to get a knockout or, or get finishes there. But it also does drain his cardio take a little bit. We've seen that in some of his fights. He really puts a lot into all his shots. And you kind of see him lumber a little bit as the rounds go on. Um, a, a little bit of an alarming fight that he had, of course, was the Kevin Lee loss. Uh, where, where Kevin Lee was picking him up over his shoulder, dumping him, dropping him around the cage. And uh, yeah, that was a long time ago, almost six years ago, but I didn't forget that fight at all. Uh, Mustafayev now 34 years old. Uh, I'm very curious to see how he's going to be uh, looking, uh, stepping on the scale. Uh, just, just Again, he hasn't fought in a long period of time, so I wonder what he's been doing. On the other hand, Yamato uh, Nashikawa... He's been extremely active. He's only 19 years old. He's about to turn 20, uh, but he's been extremely active. His last fight was a, a week ago, as I am uh, filming this. So up until the fight, he has he fought two weeks before this fight. Uh, and even it gives you the hours. You don't typically see that one week and five hours ago. Uh, he had the, a decision victory um, over in Shuto, Japan. Japan. Um, I want to talk about his resume here a little bit. He's a very entertaining fighter. If you guys want to go break down some tape on him, you guys will be pleased. His fights are very entertaining. Uh, you, you could pull up this championship fight uh, that, that he had here against Yuki uh, Kawana. Uh, who was the champion at the time, I do believe. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But this was a championship fight, though, uh, where, where he did prevail in the fifth round. And he finished uh, Kawana, Kawana off of his back. He was literally dropping elbows, uh, framing, up, framing off the head and just dropping elbows and strikes off his back and finished a fight. That's very impressive. It was like Tony Ferguson S. Um, so he's a very aggressive fighter. I like I like what I've seen from him on the feet from a technical standpoint as well. He throws very straight shots. You could tell that he's cerebral with his striking. Um, something I didn't like. I've seen him tripped and, and taken down pretty easily in some of his fights, but that's not necessarily Mustafayev's strength. So uh, it's not necessarily so alarming, although I expect Mustafayev maybe to be more st strong uh, and um, in those positions. I could see Mustafayev being the fighter that has that, that uh, strength advantage and that grappling advantage there. Uh, but again, um, Nashika, uh, Nashikawa is very aggressive, and he'll be attacking off his back. He's well-versed as well. Uh, he's well-rounded. Uh, he, he has a variety of finishes down on the mat. You see him pulling off rear chokes, arm bars, uh, triangle chokes, uh, mounting opponents and finishing them. But just, just take note, like I said earlier, a lot of these fighters are lower level. Uh, the, Ka the Kawana fight was uh, one of his more respectable victories. If you guys are familiar with Yuki Kawana, he's fought over in, in PFL. He's fought with some some high-level fighters. But also note that, you know, right around this loss, Kawana was on, about on a four-fight losing streak mixed up around this time or, or after that fight. So, uh, you know, you, you kind of wonder where he's at or where he was at at that point in time. Uh, but you see a long list of victories here. Um, 
you know, let me cut to the chase here. How do I see these guys matching up? I mean, Mustafayev, if he shows up uh, on point, of course, he's going to have that power advantage. I expect him to be the better striker. Uh, you know, the, the, the Japanese prospect, like I said, he's technical, but I got to give the edge to Mustafayev, who is really a striking base fighter. Um, he he's just has a lot more experience at 34 years old compared to the 19-year-old uh, fighter there. Um, I, I'll take those edges, of course, all over... Uh, the, the layoff. I'm not overly worried about the layoff compared to some of the question marks that I have regarding Yamato uh, based on the, the lower level opponents that he's had, his age, fighting over there in Japan. Um, now, I will say this. We're going to pull up the betting line here. Um, Megamed Mustafaev is almost a minus 600 right now with the comeback on Yamato Nashika Nashikawa at plus 400. I think there's more value on uh, Nashikawa. Um, I'm not going to be shocked if he goes out there and gets the job done in one way or another, uh, that this is a game fighter. Uh, he, he's been very active. He's going to be a little bit more comfortable in the cage. I, I think when things kick off in the beginning of the fight, just based on the fact that he's been active as of recently, well, Mustafaev will have to get his feet wet. Um, and but then you wonder about the octagon jitters as far as Nashikawa goes as well. Um, I have Magomed Mustafaev to win this fight. Um, I could see Nashikawa actually making a late push in this fight, maybe taking the third round, but I think Matt Mustafaev will already be up uh, after the first two rounds. He'll take rounds one or and two, and there is good potential that Mustafaev lands a big shot and stops the fight as well. So, uh, yeah, I got to go with Magomed Mustafaev uh, based off uh, all, all the things going on with this matchup here. Um, I'm interested to see how Magomed's going to look coming off that long layoff, and I'm interested to see if Yamato can establish his, himself as a respected opponent, even if he drops this fight, if he can establish himself as a fighter that we take note of and we get excited uh, to, to see, get a full camp leading up to a future matchup in, in the octagon. Uh, but give me Mustafayev with more value, though, on Yamato uh, Nashikawa. So real quick, as I was just about to jump into that Jelton Almeida versus Shamil Abdurakimov matchup, that fight was just scratched uh, just recently um, within the last couple of hours as I'm filming this. Uh, but but I did want to pull this picture up. Um, can you imagine uh, if you were going to the doctor to get some type of checkup and uh, in walks in Shamil Abdurakimov? Now, I know he's not necessarily... Uh, eh, playing a doctor here i believe he's with some type of doctor but he's wearing the same color as his doctor here and i'm just i'm looking at him and uh, i just found it a little comical can you imagine uh you know maybe you're getting some type of prostate exam or whatever and uh in walks uh shamil abdurakimov the modern day uh caveman uh you know that, that's a situation that you do not want to be in most likely the most lackluster matchup on the card lena landsberg taking on carol rosa I mean, you had to have one of these matches upon the card, I guess. So uh, we can't complain, right? We're, we're happy with this card. But Lena uh, stepping back in there at the age of 40, taking on Carol Rosa, who, you know, at one point in time had a lot more respect around her name, in my opinion. Uh, you know, coming off that loss against another aged opponent in Sarah McMahon, uh, who's a little bit of a different animal than Alina Landsberg, let me say that. But um, I, I think that Carol lost a little bit of steam. Uh, the way that she dropped that fight, she got taken down a few times, and uh, and the way that she started a little bit slow in a couple of her victories, even as of recently, she, she's she's had some slow starts in these matchups. She does start to pick things up as the rounds go on, and uh, she is a talented fighter, uh, but I would like to see a little bit more from her. Again, at one point in time, people were, were pretty high on her. Uh, if, if you take a look at some of the betting lines next to her name, I mean, people do respect her game. Um, I mean, this is a fight that, that really should put her back on track. Uh, Carol Rosa, um, she, she does a lot of things well. She's a good striker. She, she's technically sound with her striker striking. She's tough. She usually is walking forward, which is something that I like, uh, especially in women's mixed martial arts. I really like fighters that have that type of style. If you could be the fighter walking forward, pressing, uh, you're most likely going to snag those those decision victories. And uh, Rosa's well-rounded down in the mat. She's physically strong. Um, she shouldn't have as much of an issue uh, in the grappling department or in, in the uh, takedown defense department uh, in this matchup against uh, Lena Landsberg. Uh, compared to like her last opponent in Sarah McMahon. Sarah McMahon, of course, an Olympic uh, caliber wrestler. Um, Lena Landsberg, I will say this, she's a tricky fighter. Sometimes you, you can count her out and she'll, she'll come in, she'll show up. She's a decent striker. 
She's decently uh, physically strong as well. There's been some matchups where we've seen her go in there and kind of uh, win the, the, the clinch exchange and kind of control her opponents. Uh, the fight I'm referring to, of course, the Macy Chase on fight where she, she took a victory against Macy Chase on uh, while being a major underdog. She was able to control Chase on against the cage that entire fight. Um, so, um, you know, Lena Landsberg, maybe a little bit of the more naturally larger woman. You see her with the two inch height advantage, although she has a reach disadvantage. Uh, she, she's. Probably a fighter that that's a little bit uh, of the naturally larger opponent still, I would say. Rosa a little bit more thick. Um, can Lena kind of lean on Carol, kind of stifle her a little bit and, and steal a boring victory? I think that that is possible. I think that that, that Lena has the possibility here uh, to come in and steal a boring decision. We got to go with Carol Rosa, though. I'm sure she's extremely motivated after dropping that fight. Uh, Tutu Sarah McMahon. She's only 27 years old. She's about to be 28. She's cruising into the prime of her career. I think that she gets the train back on the tracks here. I mean, we got to lean that way. Now, from a uh, from a betting standpoint, Carol Rose minus 250. I, I understand why the line's like that, but I'm not necessarily crazy about that line because I, I do see that potential for Lena to just kind of hang on her in the clinch, push her up against the cage and make it an ugly fight. Either way, I kind of see the fight playing out like that, but I do believe... That Rosa will kind of figure that figure that puzzle out and kind of uh, break off and use her striking a little bit from the outside or uh, end up uh, dominating that that or, or taking control of those those clinch exchanges and kind of uh, take the decision victory there. So uh, yeah, I, I got Carol Rosa via unanimous decision here. All right, things are starting to heat up now. Armand Petrosian taking on AJ Dobson. A very fun fight stylistically. Both of these men favor their striking. Both men have big time knockout power. Uh, this should be a clash on the feet. Uh, both men are almost identical records. While Petrosian has one more loss uh, compared to Dobson, uh, but but do take note that, that his last loss was against a very high caliber opponent in Kyle Bahio, who's also fighting on the card. While AJ Dobson, uh, his last loss was against Jacob Malkoon, also fighting on the card. I, I do hold Kyle Bahio a little bit higher. Uh, in higher regard as far as from a talent standpoint. but So yes, I would be surprised if we see this fight uh, go down to the mat or, or we see uh, either one of these men pushing the grappling. I would be surprised if we see anything like that. I think these guys are going to stand and trade. Armand Petrosian, uh, the more technical striker, a uh, striker that, that's more uh, grounded in, in the art of kickboxing, if you will. Uh, AJ Dobson, a fighter that just carries some serious power. Of course, let's take note of, of his uh, performance on uh, Dana White's Contender Series. I understand that he did end up getting a rear naked choke, but that was set up with the power that he possesses on the feet. If you remember, he was just uh, landing some huge shots on his opponent uh, on that episode. Um, and, and that's what I expect AJ Dobson to try to do here. I expect him to, to try to land that knockout blow on Petrosian as they're, they're standing and striking uh, Petrosian. Uh, will actually have a five inch reach disadvantage in this fight, even though he's two inches taller. So Dobson with the very, uh, the a very interesting reach for his height. Uh, he has that going for himself for sure. Um, definitely worth noting that that loss that he took to Jacob Malkoon, where Malkoon was able to stifle him with the grappling. Uh, I, I just want to talk about that because it was an official play of mine and it was very frustrating to watch. Uh, but as I said. Petrosian's not really going to go out there. I don't expect him to go out there and really implement that type of type of game plan. Uh, now, as I said, both these guys favoring their striking. Uh, if one man one man was to try to uh, change things up and catch their opponent off guard, I think that Petrosian has uh, the, the the capability to do it more so than Dobson. I could see that curveball coming from Petrosian a little bit more so. Maybe he's been working on that element of his game and I could see him trying to uh, do something similarly to what Malkoon did to Dobson. But understand that Malkoon is a solid grappler, so it might not be as easy as you guys think. But I just want to also mention this real quick. Petrosian, uh, the, the, the fight that he just had against Kyle Bahio, a fighter that I'm very high and I think Bahio is a very high uh, a high cal high caliber grappler, uh, Petrosian showed development with, with that with that aspect of his game. Um, so, just wanted to uh, put that all out there. Uh, I do favor Petrosian to get the job done here. Uh, I think that he's just a little bit more well rounded. I think he's a more technical striker. But then you have that X factor of Dobson on the feet as well with the big power. Uh, he's a serious athlete as well. I know that he's been grinding uh, for a long time. He, he's been doing putting in work with uh, Matt Brown for years since he was a young buck. 
He's not 30 years old. He's in the prime of his career. Uh, he's not a fighter that you that you really want to count out. Do not be shocked if you see uh, if you see a guy like Dobson shake things up or early on this fight card and he lands a big shot and everyone's like, wow, uh, Dobson has that type of ability and he goes out there and he doesn't doubt himself. He goes out there and he throws the kitchen sink at his opponent's chin. So understand that. But I am rolling with Petrosian here. Uh, for for the uh, the factors that I talked about, just being more well rounded and more technical, I'll take the technical striker and Petrosian. And in fact, his striking has really impressed me. I think that he's one of the better strikers in the division. Uh, Petrosian is a minus two thirty five favorite with the comeback on Dobson at plus one eighty. Oh, you know, I, I like Petrosian here to get the job done. I would have, I would like Petrosian under that minus two hundred line. I would like him more around a minus one eighty five, one ninety. Not sure if you're going to be able to catch a line like that on this fight, at least at this point in time. Now, the best line that I've seen next to Petrosian's name uh, leading into this fight has been right around that minus 210 line. And the lines actually came down on him. So people respecting the value on Dobson. So if you're going to get that line that we just talked about, that good line on Petrosian, maybe you get lucky and you see a lot of action come in on, come in continue to come in on Dobson and you can catch Petrosian under, under that minus 200 value line. So uh, that's something that you take note on. Basically, all, all the big books... Uh, have nonstop action coming in on Dobson, uh, as you guys can sort of see uh, behind me here, uh, over at Best Fight Odds, uh, where you, ch you check out Bet MGM opened up at minus 275. He's now a minus 225. Again, that line coming down a little bit uh, more so. Uh, so I would want Petrosian under a minus 200 line if you can get him there, but just understand that Dobson's live for that knockout, and maybe you take some type of finishing prop. Uh, one way or another, I think these guys are going to go out there and and exchange heavy early. Maybe you take you target the under. Check that line out as well. Abu Bakar Nurmagomedov taking on Gadchi Omar Gachiov, a battle of, of some Russians here. Uh, that this is a fight that interests me here. Uh, Abu Bakar, of course, a fighter that's just always respected from a betting standpoint. Is it based on his skill set, or or is it also have to do a little bit with the last name, right? Nurmagomedov. Uh, I mean. I mean, he hasn't necessarily impressed me a great deal. Uh, definitely, he has some skills, but you know, he, he continues to go into his fights as a pretty high favorite. Uh, Gachi Omar Gachiov uh, went into his last fight against Kyle Bahayo and uh, unfortunately did not really de de deliver and uh, was really out grappled. But by Kyle, really out grappled in that fight, which to me was a little bit interesting because Gachi has proven to be well rounded uh, with his striking and grappling. And and I don't know, did Kyle kind of exploit a, a hole in his game uh you know that, that's something that uh i think we're gonna really have a, a good idea of uh, after this fight you know the book is not out on gachi and i, I really want to see uh, how he performs in that aspect of the fight against abu bakar um i like gachi striking he's tricky on the feet i thought that he had a very impressive performance on dana white's contender series uh, where he he did get the contract uh where he was where he pulled off that knee bar against janzy silva um, you know, before that, that loss in the, in his UFC debut, going out there, handling business, he was undefeated 13 and 0, um, but just understand that he lost to a high caliber opponent in Kyle Bahio. Um, Gachi, uh, about to be 30 years old, cruising into the prime of his career, expect him to be extremely motivated going to this matchup. Uh, Abu Bakar, a fighter that, that can definitely stifle and take control of his opponent with the grappling. And I think that based off the fight that we just saw, uh Gachi have against Kayo. I think that there's a real opportunity for Abu Bakar to do that here. Um but Abu Bakar is a fighter that that kind of drops the ball here and there. We've seen him submitted what twice in his last five fights, I believe. Um you know was submitted by the uh I believe the German fighter, right? Uh submitted by uh David Zawada. Got caught with that triangle choke. That was a major letdown. And I believe that fight did take place in Abu Dhabi as well. Uh, how about the loss that he took over in the PFL against Pavel Kush? Got caught in that rear naked choke as well. Um, you know, uh, you look at the, the the fighters that he's battled against as of recently. I mean, a victory over Jared Gooden. Uh, not even on the roster these days. Uh, you know, went to a draw with Bojan Veluk, Veluk, Velikovic. And then the victory over Jonathan Weston. I mean, again, I think that Abu Bakar, I think that the line's a little inflated on him time and time again based on his last name. I'm going to be rolling with Gachi uh, Omar Gachiov. Uh, he is uh, can have a little bit of a, a length advantage, a little bit a little bit taller. He could use those kicks from the outside, which we know he does very well. Uh, slight reach advantage in the arms, but I think that Gachi will get the better of the striking, and I think there's a possibility that Abu Bakar 
makes some type of mental mistake and Gachi capitalizes on it. And maybe it's not with the grappling. Maybe it's with the shot on the feet. Uh, don't be surprised if you see some type of head kick knockout or something like that. Uh, but again, if Abubakar is going to go in there and do his thing, I think that uh, if Gachi's not on, on par with his grappling, if he hasn't been working on the takedown defense and getting back up to his feet and working on that aspect of his game, he could run into some trouble with Abubakar, uh, who has some skills there. But give me the dog, all right? First dog of the card announced right there for, for my picks. Uh, now, from a betting standpoint, Abubakar is a minus 190 favorite to come back on Gachi Omar Gachi off at plus 147. I obviously feel there's more value on, on uh, Gachi at, at that line based on the fact I'm picking him. Um, but again, it will come down to how he stuffs the takedown or if, he, if his butt hits the mat, how he works his way back up. If he's able to get to the cage, work his way back up, he needs to be able to do that. Otherwise, it could be a long night for him. Hey, you guys, just putting it out there real quickly. Uh, if you guys are looking to work with me for my official plays, of course, you guys know you can always reach out to me. I'll give you my pricing. This is going to be one of the bigger uh, cards of the year for us. We're going to have some major units out there. And uh, this is probably a fight card that you would like to work with me on. If you're looking to eventually work with me, this is probably the one you want to jump on. So shoot me a message. However you like, Instagram, Twitter, email, uh, MySpace. You could write me a letter, put a stamp on it, send it out my way. Let's make it happen. A perfect matchup taking place in the light heavyweight division. Both men coming off huge victories. Volkan Ostemir taking on Nikita Krylov. Two men that were destined to eventually battle. Uh, Volkan Ostemir, of course, coming off that huge victory against Paul Craig. It was an official play of mine. Uh, you guys know I have a great deal of Paul, a great deal of respect for Paul Craig, but I do always think that there's that that recipe to take him out. And fighters like Volkan Ostemir uh, are the perfect recipe for for that. And uh, so respect for Vulcan coming through there. And he had a stellar performance in that fight. Was defending uh, the, the attempts of Craig to get the fight down to the mat and work his jiu-jitsu up. He was defending that perfectly. Now, this is a little bit of a different matchup, right? Nikita Krylov is not, not a Paul Craig. Nikita Krylov is a fighter that is very light on his feet. Uh, he has a, kind of a karate type style, I guess you would say. But not, not exactly, but you guys know what I mean. He's light on his feet. I mean, he has some serious power. He works his boxing very well. He's a dangerous fighter. He moves very well for the division. Uh, he's well-rounded. And, uh, you know, the big victory that he's coming off, of course, was the Alexander Gustafson knockout victory uh, where, where he went in there and really ended the career of Gustafson. Gustafson. No more talking about Gustafson these days, right? Uh, Nikita Krylov, that was a huge victory for him. Um, Krylov is going to have a two and a half reach advantage uh, as far as uh, his arms go. Uh, he's an inch taller. Again, he likes to work the kicks from the outside. Um, you know, the two losses that he had uh, before Gu the Gustafson victory, I actually had an official play on him against Paul Craig, and he was not able to follow the recipe to, to defeat Craig the way Vulcan did. Uh, he, he ended up getting caught in a triangle choke because uh, he, he had the fight in the bag. You knew it right away from the, from the moment the fight started, but he played around and he got caught in one of those tricky submissions of Paul Craig's. Uh, before that, the loss to Magomed and Kalayev, you guys know, I believe the, he is about to be the future champion of the division. So, uh, you know, the victory over Johnny Walker, where he really showed different elements of his skills. He was using his wrestling in that fight, which is something you want to see from a guy like Krylov who mostly favors his striking. Uh, so again, he's fine tuning all his skills. Uh, the loss to Glover Teixeira, a split decision loss. Obviously that doesn't look bad at all these days. Glover, uh, the, the former champ who's getting the rematch, rematch at the belt right now. Um, I think that this this fight here is just excellent. Like I said, I think that this fight can can really go either way. I think wh whichever man steps into the cage is in, is just more on point, is more confident on the day, and where, where uh, maybe more so where everything went smoothly leading up to the trip over there, and is just feeling his confidence is going to take this fight. Uh, I think that this is really a fight where the line should be a little bit closer than what it is. All right, so of course. Uh, one, one of these men is is a slight favorite here, and that's Nikita Krylov. Nikita Krylov, uh, right now, currently, is a, a minus 175. I found that to be a little bit surprising, all right? Um, I am going to pick Krylov to win this fight. I do slightly edge him. He is the fighter that I, I see winning this fight more so. The line is a little bit off, in my opinion, though. Volkan Ostomir is more than live uh, to, to go out there and get the job done. Um, I think that the, maybe you should see a line of minus 130 next to Krylov's name, uh, with maybe you know a, a plus 105 or even odds or something like that, right around that even uh, even standpoint for Volkan Ostomir. So, in fact, I've been a little bit back and forth on who I wanted to pick for this fight. I was almost going to pick Volkan Ostomir, but I think I'm leaning Krylov right now. I want to see how they look 
uh, at the weigh-ins, at the stare-downs. I want to see where Vulcan's confidence level is at, see how he looks walking up to the stage and whatnot. Um, it's a close fight, more value on Vulcan Ostomir, in my opinion, and maybe a possibility I swap my pick uh, you know, with my official picks over on Instagram, you guys know I post them the morning of. Maybe I pick end up picking Volkan Ostemir. That's how close I have this fight. Uh, but I do like Nikita a lot. Slightly going to edge him. I don't think you should be throwing any money at that minus 175 line. Oh, the old flyweight prodigy, Mohamed Mikhaev, the Punisher, taking on Malcolm Gordon. Malcolm Gordon actually coming off two victories. Let's not forget that now. I know Malcolm Gordon... He was really in the doghouse for a while, coming off those two losses against Amir Abalzi and uh, Suma Darji, but bounced back with two victories. Took out Francisco Figueroa and uh, and and Denise Bandar, uh, you know, and, and was able to uh, to get the finish there against Bandar. That was where he had that arm injury. That was actually a weird fight, right? So uh, he still ends up getting the job done. So got to give him credit for the W. Uh, this is a tough fight for him. We already know Mohamed Makayev is, is very talented. Um, now I will say this though. I was not that impressed with with his performance in his last fight against Charles Johnson. Now I don't know if that had to do with the fact that maybe Makayev uh, needs to work on some things and he's still an extremely young fighter. Maybe we're jumping the gun on him a little bit, or if that was based more on the fact that that his opponent uh, is actually a, a talented dude. And uh, I'm leaning more towards the fact that his opponent uh, and Charles, uh, excuse me, and Charles uh, Johnson. Charles Johnson is actually a very game fighter, right? He was a champion coming from the regional scene. He's a fighter that a lot of people have respected and have felt like he is a UFC caliber fighter for some time. And uh, he was a fighter that had uh, no lack of confidence going into that matchup against Mikhaev. And Mikhaev just pushed the grappling that entire fight and was just able to just squeak by with a, a boring decision there. Um was a little surprised to see that because Mikhaev talks a big game. And uh, you saw the performance that he had before that where he ran out there through the flying knee out there, stopped the fight quickly. Um, you know, so I, I want to see what kind of Mikhaev we see in this fight. Uh, a fight a fight that's taking place on a huge stage. He needs to get some of that momentum back. He wants to be uh, you know, what, what the youngest champion of all time, I believe. I believe that's the case, right? He's 22. I'm trying to remember... Uh, I think comment below. What's the status of the youngest champion again? Ever was that John Jones? Uh, John Jones, right? I'm trying to remember how old John was at the time. I think he still has some time here, but he needs to go out there and make big statements if he wants to get the fast track to the belt. Um, I think that this is a matchup where he could obviously do that against Malcolm Gordon. I expect Makayev to get the finish here. I think we're going to see a little bit more of that Makayev that we saw against Cody Durden in this matchup against Gordon. Um, Gordon's a tough fighter. Uh, but but I think obviously Makayev does everything better. He's the better grappler. He's the better striker. And I expect him just to kind of let loose a little bit in this fight. And um, you know Gordon again, although he's coming off a, a finish uh, against Bondar, wasn't it was kind of weird, right? Bondar got the injury, so uh, put a little asterisk next to that. And he had a decision victory over over Francisco Figueroa. I don't really find Gordon to be the most dangerous opponent. I think that Makayev can kind of let loose uh, in this fight here and go out there and get the finish. Uh, within the 15 minutes on Malcolm X uh, Gordon. No, excuse me here. I was about to end that little segment, but we got to slide over to the betting line. I mean, I guess I know why I really wasn't jumping over to the, the betting line because there's not much to talk about. Makayev's a minus 750. What are you going to do with that? I mean, are you going to throw that in a parlay? I mean, are you de are you degenerate? Are you trying to snag a couple bucks? Um, I mean, that, that's a high line. To be quite honest with you, I wouldn't even really have the biggest issue if you threw that in a parlay. That, that's kind of where I am with the confidence level of Makayev getting the job done here. Barring there's no fluke injury or some weirdness that happens, I don't see Malcolm Gordon going out there and getting the job done. I don't even see him really clipping him with the shot. I really don't see that. Um, maybe you also take a look at, at the, uh, the 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 prop line for Makayev to win this fight. Uh, one way or another to get it done, to get the job done within the distance, or you look at the under or something like that. Uh, but but all all leans towards Makayev's side. Mahmud Meridov taking on Kayo Behayo, uh, two talented middleweight fighters. Again, we know that Meridov is coming off that loss, a very disappointing loss against Gerald Mearshart. Uh, but but Mearshart has proven now that that he is a very legit middleweight uh, fighter, right? The, the, he has the record for the most submissions in the division. He's extremely game. I know he got starched by Kamzat Chimaev, and that kind of made people at the time kind of look at him disrespectfully. 
Gerald Mearshart is the real deal. So, you know, Muradov went out and was actually disrespectful to, to Mearshart uh, in the sense that he was just thinking it was going to be a walk in the park and it ended up costing him. Um, but let me be clear. I, I still believe that Muradov is a very dangerous opponent. He's a very uh, talented fighter. He's 32 years old. He really is right in the prime of his career right now. He has to be extremely hungry. Now, I'm not necessarily crazy that it's been about a year since he's been in there and he's coming off that, that loss. So I wonder where his confidence level is. And he obviously has a very tough matchup here against Kyle. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, Kyle has been able to go out there as of recently and just stifle his opponents. Uh, our, take out Armand Petrosian, uh, Gachi, uh, Omar Gachiov, two fighters that are also fighting on the card. Um, you know, the victory over Jesse Murray on Dana White's Contender Series, the victory over Aaron Jeffrey, even more impressive. Aaron Jeffrey is a very talented fighter right i mean people started to finally realize that aaron jeffrey is the real deal he lost that fight wasn't able to get a contract to the ufc he's now over um excuse me we got to give aaron jeffrey some respect real quick aaron jeffrey just had a huge victory and uh that was over in it was in bellator correct uh yeah where he starched austin vanderford in the first round uh he has two victories now all over in bellator and uh he's just he's a talented dude so uh, again, Kyle Bahio has some legit victories under his resume at this point. Uh, he trains with some of the best in the game. Uh, the way that he's able to to stifle his opponents with the grappling really impresses, impresses me. He does everything very well, but his wrestling is uh, very solid. Uh, and, and in a fight like this, uh, you know, I, I'm wondering if he's going to lean on, on that type of style to get the job done. I think that that he could. I think that that's not a bad idea. Uh, Mac Mudd, a uh, fighter that, that really goes out there and looks to land uh, big shots on you. He looks to hurt you. Uh, I think that's more the route he'll go. I think that Mac Mudd will have a little bit more of an aggressive and a dangerous type of, uh, of style, whereas Kyle will take the more cerebral and patient route, and he'll try to cruise his way into another uh, unanimous decision. And that's kind of what I see happening more so. I've been very high on Kyle. Uh, he's been coming through for me, making me money. Uh, I had him against Petrosian. had an official play on him there. Um you know, Mahmoud Muradov, I had an official play in him. I had him mixed in a parlay uh, again in that Gerald Mearshart fight. He cost me some money, so I'm not too happy with him there. Uh, but do understand that that Mahmoud Muradov, you know, look four inches taller, little half inch reach advantage there. He's a he has a big frame, and uh, if he's able to stuff the takedowns takedowns of Kyle, I think that he could definitely give him some some trouble on the feet. Uh, but understand that Kyle is very very well-versed on the feet as well. He's very confident in himself. He has a, he manages distance very well. Uh, his footwork and his distance management is very well. He has that karate-type style. And um, I even edge Kyle there as well, though. Uh, although Meridov will, will be looking for those big shots, I think that Kyle will kind of be the matador in there and uh, will even win the, the striking exchanges. And I am obviously picking uh, Kyle uh, Bihayo to, to get the job done here. Now, from a betting standpoint, let's go take a look at this line. Kyle is a minus 230, um, so it's it's not a cheap line, uh, especially when you take into consideration the the potential that a guy like Muradov uh, has when he steps into the cage. I mean, he's a talented fighter. We know Muradov. Uh, I don't know what's going on these days, but he was like under Floyd Mayweather as he made his way into the octagon. Mayweather was very high on him. I believe that they did some type of training with the boxing and whatnot. Muradov does have some nice hands. And uh, I also do want to point out real quick, uh, so some of the accomplishments that Meridov has had, uh, the finish over Andrew Sanchez, where he hit him with the flying knee, uh, the, the Trevor Smith knockout, that was a nasty knockout victory for him there. Uh, took out Alessio De Chirico, Wendell Oliveira over in the regional scene. Um, you know, I, I think that Meridov is potentially live uh, in the sense that he's a, he's a dangerous fighter, but Kyle's good, man. He's a good fighter. And, uh, you know, from a ranking standpoint, I think Kyle gets the job done here and then he cruises his way. Uh, into the top 15. I, I think it's about that time because I think that Kyle would defeat a lot of these guys uh, over in, in this uh, in, in this area of the rankings, right? Especially Darren Till. I don't know how he's still hanging on up there. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what Gaslam's still doing these days. Uh, Drickus Duplessis, the big knockout puncher, but Kyle has the style to stifle those types of guys. He's going to ease his way into the top 15. Um, I have Kyle Bahio. I would like him more around a minus 200. Uh, let's go take a quick look and see which way this line's trending. Um, over on DraftKings, he opened up at a minus 240, so the line coming down a little bit. People respecting uh, Mahmoud Meridov. Um, over at BetMGM, if this wants to load up for us. 
All right, we'll, we'll check out uh, Caesars. Caesars opens up at 240, now 220. Uh, all books trending the other way, so you might be able to get that line at minus 200 or lower. Zubara, Tukigov taking on Lucas Almeida. Tukigov uh, making his yearly stop into the octagon. Not a very active fighter. A uh, fighter that, that his names carry some some weight, of course, just being associated with Khabib. And uh, if you remember the whole Connor Khabib beef, of course, Tukigov was, was in the mix of all that. Connor going after him as well. Um, I think that his, his, he kind of latches on to, to that whole Khabib uh, persona and whatnot. And he gets that respect. He has what? He has the Instagram followers and all that. Um, he's a talented fighter. I mean, he has 3.7 million followers. So I guess a fighter that really doesn't have to be extremely active. Um, as you see him getting, getting in work with Islam Makashev, both guys, of course, fighting on the card leading up to this fight. Um, Zubara, definitely a more uh, grappling based fighter. I mean, he'll throw some heavy shots as he works his way in, but he's really a fighter that just continues to try to close the distance and cl and clinch and hang on to his opponent and try to rip them down to the mat. He'll throw some wild, heavy shots. Um, he, he really is like a Tasmanian devil. I, I do give him respect in that regard. He's a wild fighter. Uh, he does some things very well. Um, but we've seen a lot of his fights play out closely. We really have. In fact, if you take a look at his last five fights, he's gone to a split decision three times. Uh, the split decision loss to Hanato Moicano, the split decision draw against Laro Murphy. I believe that fight took place in Abu Dhabi. Uh, had they split decision uh, loss to Hakeem Dawudu. Um, Hakeem coming off a tough loss as well. So the stock there not looking as good in, in that loss. Um, and then let's talk about Lucas Almeida real quick. Lucas Almeida had the loss on Dana White's contender series against Daniel Zillaber, a fighter that people are very high on. He just took took his first loss. So uh, you know, the stock in, in that loss doesn't look as good, per se, if you know what I mean there. It doesn't look as good, uh, whereas maybe everyone's looking at Zillaber as his top prospect, so whatever with the loss. But Zillaber didn't look that good in his last loss. But in that fight, Lucas Almeida had some moments where he looked very good, especially early on. We saw that he's a dangerous striker. Uh, he's extremely tough. He could take a shot. Um, you know, Almeida is game. Since that loss, goes back to the drawing board, pulls off a guillotine choke uh, over in jungle fight in Brazil. And then the big victory, the big knockout victory over Mike Trezano. Um, you know, that that's really the biggest fight of his career. That was three months ago. Uh, Lucas Almeida has fought three times uh, compared to uh Tukigov's one fight basically in the last in the last year or so I guess if you want to date it back a year oh no excuse me no 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 yes yes that is correct that's a, a year and 11 months there since the Akeem Dawudu fight that was two years ago so Tukigov has fought once in the last two years while Almeida has fought you know one two uh three times well all within the 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 last year uh so Almeida has been much more active he's in the prime of his career about to be 32 years old he's right in that 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 frame of the prime of his career i know his confidence is sky high coming off that trezano knockout he has a three inch reach advantage he's the more naturally larger man he's also taller um yes this fight is going to come down to whether uh to whether almeida can keep tukigov off him if he could keep that distance use his footwork he's going to land those nice heavy shots from the outside um if this fight turns into a brawl on the feet, I like Almeida there. He just has to keep Tukigov off of him. Tukigov will look to mix things up. He'll look to change levels and try to get solidify some takedowns and really push the pace with his his grappling. Um, I don't want to say Tukigov has bad cardio, but with his fighting style, with him constantly pushing to get that takedown, we've seen him kind of gas himself out a little bit at times where he gets a little bit sloppy in there. Almeida uh, can definitely capitalize on on him in those situations if Tukigov really blows his load early um we're, we're taking the dog out for a walk on this pick again here so Lucas Almeida is going to be my pick let's go take a look at the betting line here um I can see Lucas Almeida landing some crisp shots with his Muay Thai Lucas Almeida is a plus 125 with the comeback on Tukigov at minus 150 due to the activity the size advantage and stylistically if he can keep this fight standing I think the striking edge goes to Almeida uh I like the very game Lucas Almeida to get the job done here. Now, it's a dangerous fight. If Tukigov gets those takedowns, it's going to be his fight. Um, should be a fun one. Give me, give me the dog there and Lucas Almeida. Bilal Muhammad taking on Sean Brady. Uh, of course, this fight does have some, some major impl implications for the welterweight division. Um, let's go take a look at that welterweight, uh, the welterweight rankings, if you guys don't mind real quick. Because I know uh, Bilal Muhammad is right towards the top. He's ranked fifth. Uh, Sean Brady is eighth. 
the winner of this fight is really going to to push their way towards the top of the division because of course you have the big three and Usman Covington uh Chimaev is up there these days now and Leon Edwards is the champion I guess you want to say the big four or, or whatnot uh if you want to really add Chimaev to the mix of course if he can make weight Chimaev more the 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 new name but Covington Usman and Edwards have been controlling this division for a long time uh Gilbert Burns is up there as well but other than that this division starting to open up a little bit and the winner of this fight is really going to be in the mix um now you guys know <clears throat> i'm not the biggest fan of Bilal muhammad's uh you know i poked a little bit of fun on ig nothing crazy nothing personal and, and muhammad's quick to hit that block button he blocked me which is why i gotta show you this picture i can't pull up his ig and you can see those horrid uh sunglasses that that he's always rocking uh in the cage after his victory and just uh you gotta watch him put those shades on and uh you know Bilal Muhammad, you know, he, he seems like he's a fun guy, but but he's not. He, he's just not really there. Uh, again, he kind of comes off like he's fun and cool, but really he's the type of, of dude that was the teacher's pet back in the day at school. He's the type of guy that's tattling on kids, 100%. He's tattling on everybody in the class. You know, if you're trying to cheat and get the, the answers from your boy, like I used to do, he used to have always had that designated person in the class that was uh, that had all the, the, the answers written down in order. From a letter standpoint, balled up and would walk by, drop it on the desk. Bilal Muhammad's 100% staying after class and letting uh, Miss Barnett know about that. And I'm not really cool with, with that. So, uh, you know, me and Bilal probably wouldn't get along. And, um, you know, Bilal Muhammad, as of recently, with his style, uh, pushes a great pace, comes in in phenomenal shape. He has some of the best cardio in the game. He's been, at, been able to go out there and really steal some victories went out there and, and just took out Vicente Luque recently but just constantly pushing the pace with the grappling and just breaking him there um but Vicente looked a little bit questionable to me though the way he was falling to his back kind of easy in that fight was a little bit questionable you know Luque's been in some wars I think he's hitting the decline a little bit early in his career eh. um listen stylistically this is a different fight Sean Brady uh, if you didn't know which I'm sure a lot of you guys do know Sean Brady is a fighter that all your favorite fighters that have been talking about for a while now from a grappling standpoint he has he is known as one of the the real gems uh in the grappling world fighting in the UFC you go to the, you go to the ground with with Sean Brady uh you're, you're going to be in some trouble um we've seen examples of that uh, you know, as of recently, he, he was able to use his grappling against Michael Chiesa, uh, was able to submit Jake Matthews, who is an absolute stud. Jake Matthews looking great these days. Um, tapped out Christian uh, Aguilera. Um, you know, so not necessarily a, a, not necessarily a lot of big submission victories as of yet, but more and more of those are going to come. And he's used his grappling uh, to, to get the job done, whether it's decision or whatnot. I mean, it, the skills are there. So if Muhammad wants to push the pace with the wrestling and whatnot, I think that Brady could definitely make him pay with some type of submission or just reversing him and, and taking advantage of Muhammad within the grappling department, taking Muhammad's back or something like that. On the feet, um, I'll favor Brady. Brady's shown some signs of technical striking at times. Not crazy about what I've seen from him there. I want to see more there. Um, maybe Muhammad gets the edge in the striking. I, I kind of want to see that play out. Uh, I have a feeling that Brady will land some some crisp shots with his boxing and kind of steal the the, the edge uh, in the striking exchanges. But Muhammad's active; he throws a lot of kicks, and I could see him maybe edging there. It's close; it's a close matchup. Um, but the difference in the grappling, in my opinion, with Brady be, being more more technical from a BJJ standpoint, I like Brady in this fight. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. Let's go check out the betting line. Uh, Brady is going to be the favorite, of course. He's a minus 140. Is that due to the fact that he's he has that O in the loss department? A lot of people respect those undefeated fighters a little bit too much. Uh, Muhammad is a guy that has a world of experience. Muhammad has, uh, what, 24 pro fights compared to Brady's 15 fights. Uh, you know, a little less than than double the amount of, of, of experience. He's fought in the octagon a lot more. Those are things that Palau has going for him. Doesn't have those sunglasses going for him, though. If he, if, this is a sight we do not want to see for UFC 280. We do not want to see Bilal Muhammad throw those shades on and have to look at those little gas station shades. Um, it will be a horrible sight. We're hoping Brady gets the submission victory. And I'm leaning more towards Brady just getting the job done with his his grappling. I don't know if he gets the sub. I think he kind of just takes it takes advantage uh, with his jujitsu and kind of gets the unanimous decision. But I would love to see a submission uh, victory. I don't know if we'll see that though, to be quite honest with you. We got a huge women's flyweight matchup here. Caitlin Chikogian taking on Manon Farot. 
Uh, Man in Front Row, again, one of the hidden gems in the game right now. Uh, she, she is slowly making a name for herself. Uh, I love the matchup here because it's giving her the fast track to become a huge name in women's mixed martial arts. She gets a victory over Chikogian. Uh, if you didn't realize, Caitlin Chikogian is the number one contender to the, to the, to the throne right now. Uh, she already has a loss against Valentina Shevchenko, so it's not a fight people are chomping at the bit at. Um, if Manon Faro goes out here, gets the victory, she is instantly in the mix for a title shot which is what we want to see, right? We want to see a new matchup uh, against Valentina Shevchenko. I mean, Talia Santos, of course, she's right there for the rematch. She had a stellar performance against Shevchenko, barely got edged out and that, that loss there. Um, but Madden Farot, she has the striking background. Uh, she is quite nasty there. Um, now, Caitlin Chikogian is a fighter that definitely favors her striking as well, right? This is a striking matchup. Chikogian puts out a great amount of volume in her fights and she uses her length to, to outpoint her opponents. She does that in an amazing way. She's came through for me time and time again from a betting standpoint. So nothing but respect towards Chikogian's way. Um, but you know, that little volume style, that little, that, that tennis scream and that, that volume style of Chikogian, I don't think it's really going to be enough for the, the, the viciously um, talented striker and men in Faro. I'm, I'm high in Faro. I think she's the real deal. And uh, I'm chomping at the bit to see Farot versus uh, Valentina Shevchenko, to be quite honest. I think that that's just a, a perfect matchup. Uh, it's a fight that, that I'll be very excited for. And um, I guess you guys are, are catching my lean here. I think that Farot is going to have the edge and the striking, which is something that Chikogin will play into. She'll look to go, try to use her boxing and whatnot. Uh, we know that she she's put in years uh, over there in the Northeast. I believe, what, what, Jason Perillo? I believe it is Jason Perillo that she's been working with for a long time. I do believe um I, might, I hope i'm not messing that up i always mix them up with the uh the, the other coach over there but it's not jason is it i don't know the coach that's been that worked with uh frankie edgar for years and uh has done wonders with a lot of big time fighters with their boxing inside the cage uh Chikogin is a solid striker since that let loss to jessica andrage on a four fight winning streak took out cynthia cavillo vivian arajo uh, jennifer maya and then as of recently amanda reba so those are all big victories i had an official play in her against rebus uh, again, nothing but respect towards Chikogian's way. Um, Chikogian with a slight length advantage. She's two inches taller, two inch reach advantage. I think that Farot closes the distance and is just ferocious with her striking and she wins uh, a unanimous decision. I know Chikogian's a fighter that always keeps the fights close and could potentially push it to a split decision. I'm, I'm actually going to say that Mountain actually takes control of this fight and, and wins this uh, hands down, she takes all three rounds. That that's how impressed I impressed I've been with her striking. All right, from a betting standpoint, you're going to see a name next to uh, a tag next to Manafort of minus two ten um, with the comeback on Chikogin at plus one seventy. Uh, it's kind of where I expected the line to be. People do respect Faro; they already know about her. Although she hasn't been super active, people just they know what she's about. They know how game she is. Uh, victories over Jennifer Maya in the last fight. Uh, Myra Bueno Silva, who's a talented fighter. She's kind of been under the radar. Uh, Tabitha Ricci, been doing her thing as well. Uh, and Victoria Leonardo. Eh? So, I mean, she's actually been in there with some some decent talent already uh, leading up to this this fight here with Chikogian. Uh, I like mine and Faro. I don't mind it. I don't mind the minus 210 line, but I would love to get it under that line. I really would. And in my opinion, if you're targeting Chikogian at a value line uh, in, in, in those plus odds, I don't really see it and it's hard for me to say because i love chikogian but i just think farat gets the job done the former ksw champion matiz gamrot taking on benil dariush the longtime staple uh, of the lightweight division in the ufc he's definitely proven himself for years uh benil dariush uh, just had a kid as of recently so hasn't been extremely active coming off that dominant performance against tony ferguson Tony has really looked to be a shell of himself. That victory just doesn't look as good to me as, as maybe it did at the time. I mean, if we're being honest, the way that Tony has been looking, just getting submitted by Nate Diaz the way he did. Um, the split decision, uh, victory over Diego Fajera. Fajera is a tough customer. Um, the knockout victory over Scott Holtzman. Uh, the knockout victory over Jacor Close. That was a real barn burner type of matchup. Uh, re remember now, though, Benil Dariush got wobbled early in that fight as well. And at times, Dariush leaves leaves his chin out there a little bit he's a little bit wild in the striking department defensively have we seen him tagged up a little bit um uh, mateus gamrot probably the more technically sound striker but dariush makes his style work for him so that's an interesting matchup there um and then again the, the submission victory over frank camacho 
Now, those are the last five fights for Darius. Well, Matuas Gamera, you know he's coming off the biggest victory of his career over Armand, Armand Sarukian, a fighter that I have that I ha, I hold in such high regard. Um, I thought Armand Sarukian took that fight, as a lot of you guys did, but it came down to the last round, I believe, again, and Gamera just showed... Uh, to show, actually, I don't even know if, excuse me, it didn't come down to the last round. I forget exactly how it played out from a round standpoint, but I definitely had Sarukian up three three rounds out of five there. But Gamrat was so game, and he pushed hard, and uh, he showed to have great cardio. He's coming off a barn burner five-round fight. I, I mean, this is an awesome matchup uh, for him against Darius. I think that Gamrat's a little bit more ready to go. Well, well Darius is coming off having his first child and all that. I think Gamrat's just, uh, you know, he, he's deep in the game right now, just fought three months ago against one of the top fighters, uh, had the knockout victory over Diego Fajera, so was able to look better against Diego Fajera than Darius did. Uh, the, the Comor over Jeremy Stevens was ridiculous the way that he went out there and just made quick work of Jeremy Stevens. Uh, Gamrat is a nasty grappler. He is legitimately one of the best grapplers in the division. Now, we know Darius is a very serious grappler as well, uh, so I'm very excited to see how that plays out, but I give the edge... Uh, Tutu Gamrat in the grappling department. Um, I'm going to pull up the lightweight rankings right here real quick, uh, if you don't mind. Excuse me, we got the featherweight rankings, and then we work our way over to the lightweight rankings, where, of course, you, you've got some, some men we're going to be talking about in a little bit towards the top. Uh, Darius ranked 6, Well, Mateus Gamrat ranked 9 right behind him. So this is a huge fight for both men as they are waiting in line. Uh, uh, to fight some of the bigger names in the division. You guys know lightweight division. The lightweight division is my favorite division. So this is a huge fight. Mateus Gamrat only tasted defeat one time. And that was against Guram uh, Kuta Lazaz, uh, the Georgian fighter. That was almost two years ago. A lot of people thought that Gamrat maybe edged that fight out. But we know that, that Guram is a very talented fighter. So uh, it is what it is there. Uh, I like Mateus Gamrat in this matchup here. You know, based on some of the things we talked about, Darius having his his first child, uh, I'm kind of wondering where his mindset's at. But Gamrat has just proven to just be one of the top guys in the game right now, and uh, I'm leaning Gamrat for this this matchup. I think Gamrat's the better grappler, uh, the better striker from a technical standpoint. I could see him landing a big shot on Darius. Uh, I like Gamrat to get the job done, and I say that with all due respect to, towards Darius because Darius is a stud as well. This is an awesome fight. Um, you see Gamrat's a minus 190, almost a 2-1 to one favorite. Uh, that, that's saying a lot against a guy like Darius. And uh, I think it has to do with some of the things that we talked about. The layoff, uh, the performance that Gamrat just had in a five-round war. Uh, I like Gamrat there at minus 190. And um, I would take Gamrat even anything under minus 200, I wouldn't have a problem with. I, I like Gamrat there to get the job done. Now the real fun begins. The big three. Uh, of the card, starting off with Piotr Jan versus Sean O'Malley. Uh, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start things off with talking about the line. Piotr Jan is coming into this fight as a big favorite. I'm going to tell you the line right from the get-go, just so you have an understanding if you don't already know. Uh, Piotr Jan is, right now, he is a minus 300 favorite with the comeback of plus 250 against Sean, on Sean O'Malley. Uh, I do find that a little bit interesting. Uh, Sean O'Malley is a very, very dangerous striker, and he's a tough problem to solve with, with his length and his type of striking um you know going into this this fight here he's gonna have a five inch reach advantage he is four inches taller uh so he has that, that length advantage in his legs and all that to work his kicks from the outside um now Piotr Jan is just non-stop action though and he will look to close the distance on Sean O'Malley and we know that that Piotr Jan is just about as technical as it comes uh, in the striking department. He's brutal. We know he's been putting in work over at T Tiger Muay Thai forever. And um, I could definitely see Piotr Jan breaking Sean O'Malley down. I think that he will close the distance there. Uh, although Sean O'Malley will use his footwork and whatnot, I think Piotr Jan will kind of close the distance and chop those legs down and just be stronger in the clinch. And um, I think this is a tough fight for, for Sean O'Malley. So if Sean O'Malley is going to have success in this fight, he really has to avoid... Uh, Piotr Jan closing the distance and just putting it on him. He's going to have to really work from the outside and, and potentially land a big shot uh, on Piotr Jan and, and get the, the stunning upset knockout victory, which, of course, Sean's always live for. I mean, he's an electrifying striker, uh, but he will have to work from the outside. I really question Sean O'Malley's durability. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, I mean, his lone loss against Marlon Chito Vera, he, he, his legs gave out on him, got broken down, got injured kind of, and uh, was ended up, or he ended up getting finished via TKO down in the mat. 
Uh, if you remember his fight against Andre Sukumtat, his leg, his legs gave out on him. He got injured there, and he should have lost that fight, but Sukumtat didn't know how to just stand up and uh, get the victory there. And uh, now he's some type of uh, of actor. Um, you know, uh, shout out to, to Andre Sukumtat there. Um, I mean, listen, is Sean O'Malley live as a plus 250 dog? I, I'm, I'm willing to entertain anyone saying that. I think that there's... A possibility that that's that's the case. Sean O'Malley is so diverse with his striking. He does so many different and wild things. I could easily see him getting a knockout over anybody that he fights against. Period. Uh, Piotr Jan does have a granite chin, though. Do understand that. Uh, you guys know that. I feel that Jan obviously should have won the Sterling fight. Sterling milked that knee, and I thought that he won that last fight, which I saw live it was it was a great disappointment. Disappointment cost me a bunch of money. Uh, but other than that, I mean, going out there, taking out a guy like Co Cody Sanhagen, Corey Sanhagen, who's just a stud, proves it time and time again. Uh, you know, taking out Jose Aldo, breaking him down, knocking out Faber. We know that Piotr Jan's the real deal, and I've been saying it forever, ever since he came into the UFC. I was familiar with his work over in Russia, and um, I definitely favor him. Even though he's a smaller fighter, I, I favor him uh, just walking O'Malley down and breaking his legs down, chopping the legs with the, le the leg kicks and just clinching up and being stronger, maybe some inside trip takedowns. And I see him kind of getting after O'Malley and having success there. Um, now, from a betting standpoint, I'm not really crazy about him at a minus 300 betting line. If I would like Piotr Jan more like a, a minus 240, 230, I think that line needs to come down. I think that there's potential value on Sean O'Malley at plus 250. Uh, he will have to implement his fighting style, working from the outside, using his footwork. And there is some potential that that happens. Uh, cannot wait for that fight. What's up, you guys? I got a special offer for you guys. I'm doing this once again, since this is a giant fight card. If you're looking to sign up for a new sports book, reach out to me. I'll give you the directions in order to get the referral and for you to get credit, give, help me get credit. Uh, just got to get put my email in the referral link that you sign up through. Uh, you're going to get an additional bonus in your Bovada.lv account. It's my favorite sports book. I highly recommend you work with Bovada.lv. If you sign up through my referral link, not only do you get another added bonus to your account, I'm going to give you two, get this guy out of here. I'm going to give you two, two packages uh, for any card you want to, you want to use it for. Of course, you could use it for two, a UFC 280. Uh, if you watch this video on time, which probably not a lot of you guys will, the fights take place tomorrow. But uh, the the fight card, the UFC Vegas uh, fight card that we have taking place tomorrow, give you that one. Or you could just use it for any fight card that you want moving forward. All right, guys. So reach out to me. Two fight cards for my official packages for free if you sign up through my link. And again, I appreciate you guys so much for, for, for helping me out with that referral. And uh, it's a win-win situation for us all. Let's make some money together. The bantamweight championship of the world is on the line here. Aljamain Sterling taking on the snake TJ Dillashaw. I love this matchup. Uh, now, let's remember, TJ Dillashaw is coming off a, a very impressive victory over Corey Sanhagen. Some people thought that he lost it. Either way, it was an extremely close matchup, uh, extremely close fight. Uh, that fight actually took place over a year ago, uh, which is it's interesting, right? Especially for the fact that TJ was coming off a over a three-and-a-half-year layoff before that due to the, the steroid uh, you know, failed drug test that, that the situation he had or the EPO, whatever he was doing. Um, you know, I, I got to give credit for TJ Dillashaw, the way he bounced back after that long layoff goes in there, gets a victory over one of the best in the division right away. I mean, TJ Dillashaw is so game. I mean, he's the ultimate competitor. Uh, maybe not, not, not the type of guy you want to have as a friend or one of your best friends, but listen, from a competitive standpoint, you got to respect his mindset. This guy is just all about winning. And, um, you know what? I, I, I like him in this spot here. I'm jumping to my pick here. Aljamain Sterling, extremely talented, a dangerous striker, very underrated grappling. I mean, Aljamain Sterling has some sick jujitsu, has some good wrestling. He's very physically strong, but we know TJ Dillashaw has the wrestling and all that uh, to go with his dynamic striking. Uh, I mean, we, we know you see him here with, with, the, with his old coach here. They've been together uh, ever since uh, Dwayne uh, Bang Ludwig made his way over to Team Alpha Male and snatched him over there. I have nothing but respect for for the game of Ludwig from a training standpoint, maybe not as a person or whatever, but uh, I mean, I love the way they mix things up on the feet. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of that uh, in this fight. It's not going to be like the fight we saw against Corey Sanhagen, where I think he had a different plan. I think TJ Dillashaw is going to look to really use his striking in this fight. And I think he's going to have success. I think he's going to be the more dynamic striker. You're going to see the head kicks coming out. You're going to see all those tricks that you saw in the Hen and Burrell fight. And um, I think that he can keep this fight off the mat. Uh, he, he can avoid that situation of Aljamain Sterling taking the back, which he does so amazing. 
uh, so amazingly. He's one of the best fighters in the game at taking people's back, uh, you know, holding in uh, that, that leg lock there and just stifling his opponent and stealing rounds. Uh, we saw him do it against Piotr Jan. We've seen him do it against a lot of people. We saw him take the back of Corey Sanhagen to get that early finish. I think TJ D Dillashaw can avoid that, and I think he could be the 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 better striker, and he can win a decision with the striking, or he can maybe land a big shot and get a knockout. Um, we've seen Sterling knocked out, right? I mean, if you remember that knockout loss that he had, I, mean, I know it was a long time ago, but against Marlon Marais, uh, got ca caught with the head kick, uh, or a knee, excuse me. It was like a knee. It was kind of a weird weird way he got caught. Uh, kind of walked into like a kick. It was weird. Um, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see something like that. All right, so... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the snake here. I think the snake reclaims his title, which would be amazing after everything he's been through. Um, now, from a betting standpoint, this is a dog pick. Again, I'm throwing, a, I'm throwing another dog pick at you guys, so no complaints. We already have three dogs picked. Uh, Dillashaw's a plus 140. Sterling's a minus 170. I see more value on Dillashaw plus 140. He's just so game. He's he's a very game opponent. And, uh, you know, I still think that Sterling uh, kind of snuck one off on Jan just stifling those rounds, kind of holding on to Jan there. And, and I thought he should have still lost the fight. You guys know that. Uh, Fake that that knee, obviously stole the victory there. So I mean, there should be two L's there. Uh, the Sanhagen fight was very impressive. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the Munoz fight, he was kind of hitting from the outside, using his footwork. Uh, the Rivera, eh. I mean, TJ's, TJ's championship material here. Sterling's going to have a four-inch reach advantage. He's an inch taller. He's a physical specimen. But the, the snake is just a winner, man. And now he's had that, that fight back in the octagon. I know it was over a year ago, but he's been back in the octagon. He's getting the, the cylinders going, getting it and the wheels moving. And uh, I, I, my gut tells me the snake gets the job done here. Oh, man, I'm working up a sweat to uh, to give you guys my pick here. I've been so back and forth uh, with who I, who I was going to go with with this, this uh, selection. You guys know I have a great deal of history with my boy Charles Oliveira. I've been riding with him for a long time, and he's been an underdog for me. And a lot of those official plays that I've thrown at him, uh, even when he's a favorite, he's been coming through for me. The submission props I throw at him, he hits on everything. I mean, I have such a, a great deal of respect uh, for Charles Oliveira. I mean, this guy, he, he's uh, he's my cash cow, you know. And uh, stylistically, we know that I, I've said time and time again, he is the greatest uh, s s submission and Brazilian jiu-jitsu player that has ever performed in the octagon. I truly believe that. Of course, he has the record for the most submissions uh, in UFC history. He is such a stud. Uh, we know that Islam Makashev likes to close the distance and kind of work his, his wrestling and his grappling uh, in his fights. Obviously, he can run into a world of trouble if he goes down to the mat uh, with a fighter like Charles. Um, so, you know, stylistically, that, that's going to be uh, very interesting to, to see play out. Um, Islam Makashev is just so disciplined. He's so grounded uh, with with his fighting style. We know that he's been working with Khabib uh, and Khabib's father and, and all them for forever. I mean, he's just one of the, the staples of that crew. Um, I have a great deal of respect uh, for for the game that that Islam Makashev brings in, um, which is why I'm going to talk about this fight a little bit more. But I'm going to give you guys my pick here, man. It saddens me to say it, man, but I got to say Islam Makashev takes this fight. I think that Islam is going to slow the pace of this fight down. We know that Charles thrives in those those wars and the, those those crazy uh, explosive types of, of matchups, um, you know, where, where Charles can get tagged and get dropped. He'll pull the opponent down to the mat. He can work his jujitsu. I think Islam is going to be very disciplined. Uh, you know, those Dagestani boys, the, the crew over there, they have proved time and time again. Khabib has shown... They are so disciplined, and I think Islam will be very patient in this fight and will wait till they get more sweaty and, and, and they get a little bit more tired before he looks to use the grappling as more so. I think in the meantime, he'll just kind of try to slow things down, and I just I see Islam being a lot more strong strong in the clinch, uh, just being the better wrestler, and I see him being defensively sound enough to avoid that submission from Charles Oliveira. Uh, now, Charles is going to be extremely live uh, to, to get that submission victory. He's going to be extremely live uh, to land a big shot. His striking is so underrated. His Muay Thai is so nasty. Uh, now, let's not forget, if you guys remember, when, when uh, Islam, his lone loss of his career, which I just did a little post about that on IG, uh, at MMA Fortune Teller underscore, that was the last time he, he tasted defeat back in 2015. Uh, first round knockout loss against Adriano Martins. Uh, I remember seeing that live. That was a wild one. Um, you know, I believe it was the head kick, right? So, I mean, can Charles maybe hit him with a big shot like that and finish him early? I think that that's uh, definitely a possibility. But I just, I see Islam being 
so patient and technically sound with his defense that I think he avoids all that. And he's going to just kind of edge the, these rounds out with, with his strength and grappling advantage. Um, Charles will have a three and a half reach advantage. Uh, both men, five foot 10. Uh, Islam is a serious, serious fighter. Both men are, are such, such uh, studs. Some of the best lightweight fighters, but some of the best UFC fighters that we've ever seen perform. I got to go with Islam Makashev though. Uh, the line has came down. We're going to get to the, the line here. I want to talk about the trajectory of the line as well. But um, Islam Makashev, uh, currently a minus 170 favorite. And with the comeback on Charles Oliveira plus one plus one forty one. If you were targeting Charles Oliveira, you definitely wanted to be on this line very early. Um, we've seen him at a plus two hundred. Uh, we've seen that line up up at the plus two hundred uh, line there. So uh, depending on what book you're working with, when they opened it up to you, plus one ninety, it opened at Caesars. I mean, we've been seeing it calm down. So people obviously respecting Charles Charles Oliveira's game. Um, and right now, you're looking at a line of plus 141 in Charles Oliveira. Is there more value on that minus, I mean, that plus 141 line? Oh, man, I, I hate to say it, man, but I still think I like the minus 170 on Islam, if I'm being honest. I just think that that's how good he is. And he, usually you see him, what, as a minus 500, minus 600. Um, he's just a stud. He's right at the prime of his career. And um, I am going to be taking Islam Makashev to... Most likely win a unanimous decision, take the decision victory here, uh, or maybe, just maybe, he lands a big shot and gets a finish too because we know that Charles is prone to getting, getting tagged up a little bit. He usually survives them and uh, gets his gets his opponent sucked into his game, but I could see Islam landing some big shots. He's very technically sound. He's more technical. Ah, I shouldn't say that. Charles is very technical. Te Charles is just a little bit more aggressive and r puts more risks out risk out there. Uh, and I, I favor more so the patient and cerebral style of Islam here. Sad as me to say it, but my pick is is Islam Makashev to win this main event bout. Uh, sorry about that, Charles. All right, that's going to wrap up UFC 280. The big boy. Uh, this card is going to be awesome. You guys got to be keeping up to, up with me on Instagram leading up to this, this fight card. And the day of, uh, I'm definitely going to hop on a live for sure. And even leading up to the fight, I'm going to hop on a live. So, Catch me on Instagram at MMA Fortune Teller underscore. Catch all my tweets at the MMA Teller. If, again, if you guys want to work with me for my official plays, reach out to me because you guys know we're going to be having major units on the board for this card. We see our spots. We know we know how to make some money on this card. You guys already know those spots are there. We're going to be making money on this card. Things have been going very well. Um, so I appreciate all you guys there. Please hit the like button for me. It means a lot. Please subscribe to the channel. It means so much to me, guys, especially all you guys that are still here all the way at the end of the video. You guys know I got so much love for you guys. You guys are my real supporters. And without you guys, there's nothing going on over here. So um, got to leave you guys with some parting words. Maybe I should start planning these uh, a little more so because I'm telling you guys the truth. I just wing it. I think of the first thing that comes to my mind. And um, what am I going to give you guys this time, man? Oh, frick. Let me give you guys. Um, well, first and foremost, definitely, I hope all you guys are being cerebral, patient, and intelligent with your bets out there. Hope none of you guys are being reckless because although uh, those days are way behind me, I've had some some moments in my my life from a betting standpoint where I've gotten crazy. I've really taken control uh, of myself uh, for, for years now, and and, I, and that's something that uh, means a lot, a lot to me from a betting standpoint, right? We live and breathe this betting stuff. You have to have your legs under you. Uh, I don't, I hate to say it, but I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that are probably not doing that just based on the amount of people that watch, that are watching this video and, and we're all sports better. So for you guys that are just getting wild out there and that are chasing your bets, don't do it. Do not do it. Slow your roll. Remember when you see your account, say you got a couple thousand in your account. All right. And you lose a couple hundred, you lose a thousand and then you're chasing that money back. Just remember when you're looking at that, you're at 4K, then you're looking at that 3K, you think you got to jump up to 4K in one day. Think about what that 3K looks like compared to that $200 in your account is that, or that 300 or that zero. All right. That's that depressing feeling where there's nothing there. Slow your roll. 3K is a lot to work with or whatever you're working with, you know, skew the, the, those increments down to whatever you're working with. If it's 500 and you're, then you got a hundred, that 300 still a lot more than a, that hundred. And it only takes one solid fight card to to build your bankroll right back up to where it was and then just to look your to work your way back up into the green. All right. So 
Just remember that, guys, man. I'm telling you, if you're disciplined with your bets, it goes a long way. At the very least, if you're making smart decisions, you're going to more than break even or break even. I I truly believe that. Uh, At this point in time, I feel confident enough, at least from what I'm doing, that's not even an issue for me year to year. I mean, we're we're profiting very nicely over the last couple of years, and I think you guys can do the same. You know, if you guys are tuning in regularly, and you guys are knowing these fighters, you're knowing the stylistic matchups, you're you're analyzing these odds and knowing which lines to attack. There's no reason why you're not able to enjoy betting on fights with still making a little bit of money or at the very least not losing any money. And that's a, that's a solid thing. That's where you want to be at. You don't want to be losing money. All right, guys? So that's my message to you. I know this is a giant card and a lot of you guys are going to get reckless out there. Don't do it. All right? And there's all types of sports on now. You got hockey. Uh, taking place. The NBA is about to pick back up. You got college football. You got the NFL. Uh, the baseball playoffs are taking place. You guys, you got to be smart out there, all right? And if you need help doing that, reach out to me. Maybe I can give you some words of wisdom or help work with you to uh, to make sure you're not blowing your blowing your load there because that's the last thing I want to see. I don't want to see any of you guys depressed or sad because you're losing a bunch of money, all right? That's my message to you guys. So maybe not the most deep from a uh, uh, a world perspective, you know, a life perspective, but from a betting standpoint, it's a message that needs to be said. And uh, that's what I'm leaving, leaving you guys with. So nothing but love to all you guys out there. Shout out to all the good human beings that are listening to this. Um, we live in a, a, a crazy world and there's some, some dirt bags out there. Uh, thank you for all you guys that, that walk around being legit human beings and uh, making this world a little bit more of a pleasant place to be, uh, to be in. Right. And uh, for all these these dirtbags and scumbags that we see out there, you see them on Instagram, you see them, you see these videos going viral, uh, man, you guys disgust me. And hopefully uh, none of you guys are listening. I don't think there's any of you guys out there. Uh, you know, some of you guys that are at a bad place in your life and you look to implement that pain on other people on this earth, it ain't the, it ain't the way to go and it ain't going to make you feel better. You guys got to find what, what's hurting you, find out your sore spot and you work on that and you become a better person, you feel better and... Uh, Time will heal all things, all right? Time will heal all things. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that are going through some things right now. Uh, I know for a fact there's there's some of you guys out there that are going through some very difficult challenges. I know how life is. I know things I'm going through, uh, health things and different things like that that you can't control, you can't seem to get a grasp of. Be patient. Eventually, things are going to work out. It could seem grueling. There's things you could be waiting on for years to finally go away or to fix up. That whatever you got going on relationships this and that they will clean up and you will find that peace of mind eventually uh, one way or another i guarantee you that it always happens so stay strong out there enjoy this week uh, enjoy the fights taking place uh tomorrow if you guys catch this early enjoy ufc 280 which is the real card we're all excited for and uh god bless you all signing out the teller welcome to the show this is the mma fortune teller yeah The MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.